Welcome. Namaste, beautiful souls. Today I am here doing a deck review and it is tension. of the decks library and offer feedback um, information about them that reflections that have come to me in in working with these decks and as new decks come into my library of course I will share those with you but I have a lot that I have never done walkthroughs of nor uh, you may have seen me read with them live on my Tuesday readings, but you, you haven't seen uh, any sort of a, a commentary on it. So that's what the purpose of this five o'clock time slot is on Wednesdays. And so I'm hoping to do this regularly. I know that during the holidays, there will not be as many um, reviews, but I will resume this again in January. And if you're interested, I have posted my holiday schedule with all the upcoming live streams on my community page as well as my Facebook page and in the Facebook group. So you'll know where you'll know where to find me. So hi Sunny DD. Welcome. Welcome to you. All right. So let's uh, go here. So today I am sharing with you the future ancestor tarot. And this is a very gentle deck um, that I have thoroughly enjoyed working with. And I was, there's something about the colors in this deck that speak to me very much. And you will, now is it here still? I may have moved it off my table. Last week, uh, it's funny, I did a, a walkthrough of a newer deck, one that I impulsively bought. It was a um, the... Oh my goodness, the name is, it's a very similar color palette. And I'm just looking at this deck thinking, wow, there's something about these colors that really speak to me personally. And this is one of the reasons why I feel it's gentleness. Another thing that I love in a, hi Sharon, I love in a tarot deck is the spaciousness. There, I am going to be doing a deep dive. So the next deep dive that I'm going to do is with the Full Arcos Tarot, which is a rather busy, crowded deck. Um, this particular deck is a walk into say, awakening and awareness through dreams. It is anything but a spacious deck, but I think the... Um, what is evoked in the artwork does a great job with taking us into the dream world. So I, I work with a, a real variety of decks, but I have to say that I am more and more leaning towards decks with more space. Uh, it, it feels like I can breathe when I'm looking at the card. It is, it leaves space for my own interpretation, for my intuition, for different stories to develop. And I don't feel like I am being painted, directed into any specific uh, direction. And I really like that in a tarot deck. I am also very inspired and touched by the creator story of the deck's creation which um, began with uh, the 13th Archon and the Death card. So I'll talk about that when I, when I get to that. And I do not have, so after the deck was created, uh, and I'm not sure when it came out, but there is now a, a more extensive guidebook and I do not have it. I don't think I will be purchasing it um, because I can easily read this deck intuitively. I do have the, uh, the little, insert that comes with it. So if you're not familiar with the deck, this is the, the little insert that comes with it. And I will share several of these with you today. Love the, the image of the dive, the simplicity of the flowers, the space, the also the um, suggestion that we're diving into the river, diving into the river of life. And the flower that is on the left looks very much like a lotus. And so that symbol in a 
itself is really powerful. Um, yeah, there is a, there's a there's a freedom here that feels uh, that I like that I that I very much connect to. Now, also, there is a this is not this is not easy, right? So diving into the depths of the waters, we don't know what the temperature is going to be. We don't know how deep we're going to go. We don't know what we're going to encounter when we get there. We could hit our head on the bottom. We could, it could be a beautiful experience. And so there's a lot of unknown in this card. And there's something about the dive that, that feels, I, I really I resonate with. There are quite a few tarot decks that use hands at, on the magician card. And that that works with me. You know that I love the Lily White Tarot. And in that deck, we also see the energy within the hands. And on these palms, we see the, um, the all-seeing eye in the palms. The palm chakras are connected to the heart space. So I'm, I'm not really sure. I feel magician energy in this card, but there's a, there's a sense of using the hands to access the tools. Um, in the little pamphlet, uh, this is called The Alchemist. All the tools you need to create magic for yourself and your community are within reach. Use your power and energy wisely. Instead of the pillars, we see, so in this deck there, we see the simplicity of flowers and leaves, and the high priestess is here. Um, in a, um, I know the I know that the Sanskrit name, the Japanese name for this pose. I don't know what how you would describe it in English. And actually, you know what? It almost looks as if, and this to me, this is a this is a different energy. Um, if her legs are tucked underneath her and she is sitting upright. Uh, with a, with the spine straight, as if she were chanting or in a meditation or um, sitting uh, in front of, of a teacher or something. But she's actually, when I look at this, I feel like she's relaxed. Her her knees are shifted over to the side, and I'm sensing something different here. There's there's a comfort here with this. Hi, Marilyn. Welcome. It is. Uh, it's very calm, actually. And I feel like she is in her element. Quite a different vibe from an RWS high priestess. Trust in your divine feminine wisdom. Your intuition knows the truth. But I'm really feeling a power of connection with spirit, with energy, with ritual. And she is not focused on what is in her hand. She is looking to the side. It's a deeply humble, yet relaxed, yet relaxed posture. The Empress, you are a deep well of warmth and love. Continue to nurture your sacred magic. I'm going to have to shift. I'm going to show you what I probably want to see it better, too. I'm going to do this, and then I can look at that camera and comment on that illustration. We definitely get the sense of abundance in all that is being created here. I feel as if what is in front of the Empress is a fire, which is really interesting because that is a different quality um, than you would normally see with the Empress card. I also want to comment to that I, not so long before this deck came into my hands, I had the self-love tarot. And this deck seemed to take its place. I felt so much more comfortable with this deck and I, and I sold the self-love tarot. Don't regret it at all. And this one, this one makes me feel calm. It makes me feel so very comfortable here. And there's a really interesting parallel between these two feminine archetypes in that the Empress is between two smaller plants 
Well, the high priestess is between these two large leaves. I just find that, I find that really intriguing. And I want to, and I have, I've been reading with this deck for some time, allow myself to read with it intuitively. And, and if there, there are meanings, if there are, if there's alchemical information, astrological information, I'm gonna let it come through. But I think there's something really beautiful uh, in, in the artwork here. The emperor. And I'm sure for some of you, the particular leaves or the particular flowers will have uh, an energy that you can read into. It's a very stern looking face. The arms are crossed. I feel as if the emperor here is, is waiting for something. You know that structure and boundaries have the power to turn dreams into reality, planting seeds for generations to come. It's funny, you know, when I read her descriptions, I, I feel different things here. I feel an impatience, an impatience to move forward with this card. Um, and maybe that is the Mars energy that is reflected here. Hi, Michelle. Welcome. I really love working with it too. And hi, Elizabeth. Welcome. Um, and so the fifth arcanum, instead of Hierophant, we have Virtue. Reflect on the lessons, rituals, and support that has shaped who you are today and, that, and what lessons you will continue to teach moving forward. The basis of this deck, this deck was inspired following the death of two of Alexa's uh, grandfathers. Um, Alexa Villanueva is the creator of this deck. Her studio is Lexa Luna. And she was lost deep, deep in grief uh, at the time of the death of, the, of her two grandfathers. And this deck was inspired through that process. And in this card, we are reminded of the, the wisdom and the power of connection through, through our elders. Very interesting. This theme has been growing and growing over the past few weeks. And I would suggest that this theme is so powerful that if there is an old recipe, if there is an old tradition you haven't touched on for years, this is something you might want to want to pick up on because I, I've been really feeling this in the environment. Call in a love that lifts your spirits, a love that embraces all that you are today and all that you will grow to be. One of the things I feel when I look at this card is it's almost as if the figure that is standing is bringing down a part of themselves. It feels like a soul fulfillment. Like they are, like they're that, that, the, the body that is up will come down and they will they will come together. Um, they're, they're drifting towards each other in a really beautiful way. Um, working towards a completion of sorts, which is something I, I do. I work with this in the lover's card. You know, um, reclaiming your divine masculine self or reclaiming your divine feminine self to honor your honor your wholeness so instead of diving into the water the chariot is flying off flying away um focus there's definitely focus here and we see movement and one of the things i will i I don't think this card has come up in any readings that I have done. Movement, direction is all really important. And if we look at the cards we've seen so far, we do have a sense of right and left and facings. Um, naturally, we would have a lot of face on cards early in the majors. Also movement. So I love a deck that has movement. And we see in the next one, this is a beautiful strength card, um, a connection, left facing. But what I'm picking up 
one in this particular card is the strength to let go. And this is a huge one for people. And I can see this as a very, very, I mean, that is a huge thing in grief work. And because this deck was inspired through the process of grief, this is a really important card for that. I, th I think this deck is, um, could have a sub, a subtitle. I'm not sure that the title Future Ancestor Tarot really explains uh, the nature or the heart of this deck. The beauty, there is so much beauty and freedom in letting go. You know that at old adage, right? If they were meant to be yours, they will come back. If you let them go, they're free. And that one, that's what I really feel in this particular card. Give yourself permission to retreat. Give yourself permission to dive into sacred texts. This feels very much like a Svadhyaya kind of card. That's one of the yogic concepts. Um, and we see that the hermit here has arrived at, in the cave. The hermit has arrived at their destination. They, they are alone. They're deep in their study. Perhaps they're memorizing a mantra. They are, they're reading a sacred text that they wanted to read. Maybe they're reading a favorite classic book that they haven't had, they haven't read since they were young, or they never actually enjoyed it when they were young because they were so busy studying it. You know, this, this could be something else, just the, the right and the sacred space of being alone. And I, I really like this card. Allow, uh, Alexa says, allow your solitude and wise ancestors to be your teacher. So she's she's weaving in the energy, the messages of um, wisdom through all directions of time. And perhaps that is why she called this deck future ancestor tarot is because it, it's an acknowledgement of our ancestors existing in all directions of time. And that's a very shamanic thing. There's, now here in the wheel card, um, we do have in this deck a blend of day and night, which is which is great. And I think that will really help um, for in developing readings. Like the more you get to know the deck, and you can pay attention to night and day, white and black, dark and light. And here in the wheel card, we see, so maybe I need to move this up. So it almost looks as though the moon is in the belly of the person in the center of the wheel. And that's a very powerful thought. A very powerful thought. And I'm sure that you can see other things in this card as well too. Honor life's sacred cycles. The only constant is change. And of course, this could um, speak to um, if there are any mods here. Thanks for, for helping me out. Um, this could also speak to the blood moon cycle as well too. And I don't know if that's anything that you bring into this card when we're looking at the wheel, um, but definitely if you were looking at the high priestess and the wheel, that might be something that arises with this card. I'm just looking at the, uh, the power of the moon in the belly. Um, Thank you very much, Didi. Uh, uh, Didi, are you a... Okay. All right, just let me get a handle here. Okay. This is most unfortunate. 
Okay. So thanks for your help with this. I'm going to assume that you're, I'm going to keep focused on what I'm doing here and, and hopefully you guys can keep slamming the trolls. All right. Um, where are we at? <laughs> Um, I just need to take a breath, regain my focus here. <laughs> this is one of the reasons why I have so enjoyed the members only videos. All right, let's go on. So the 11th Arcanum, we have Justice. And again, a card that is looking at the um, relationship of receptive and active energy and you might also know this as the karma card does she call this justice yes all your actions have a ripple effect in your future past and self -pras. So there's something else here that i'm picking up on and that has to do with well, of course every action has a reaction and we need to be mindful that justice does not always seem just um there is a there is a bigger picture so i'm not sure that i Hmm. What might happen with this card uh, is that I might take it in another direction because there's something going on here, looking deep into the eyes of each other, that feels um, like it may very well arise in a reading. And again, this card, this card has not come up in any readings that I have done. However, this metamorphosis card is really powerful. You know what this reminds me of a little bit? Ah, that's great, Dee Dee. Yeah. That's great. Um, I like that. This justice card reminds, sorry. Gosh, I can't look at the chat. Um, this metamorphosis card reminds me a little bit of the 20th Arcanum in the Sasarabito Tarot. We see the person wrapped up in the blanket and the whole idea of, of metamorphosis. Um, it is transformation. It's beautiful and i love that i love the space i love the silence um yeah it's it's really quite something this has been a really great card it's come up a lot in many readings that i have done now here is the card that was the inspiration for uh the for the video for not for the video for the deck and the creator was out Okay. This card was the inspiration for the creation of this tarot deck. And I felt very moved that Alexa described her experience in observing the plant and observing the water drops on the plant. And she lost two grandfathers. Um, and this, this plant that she was observing had two leaves on it. And it, uh, it, was just it was just really very, very poignant. And I suggest that if you haven't read, if you haven't read the description that is on Alexa's website, which is linked in the description box below, that you go to the website and uh, try to, um, and 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 you will understand the the beauty that inspired the creation of this deck. Okay, thank you all for your support uh, in this in this chat with the trolls. I really appreciate it. Um, 
I, if you would please, if you want me to look at the chat, if you highlight it in orange, then I will look at it. Otherwise, I'm just going to focus on the cards because it's it's really distracting me, right? And I want to get um, a little more quickly here. Uh, quite like this card, and again, we have um, we have a lot of similar energy in this deck, and I'm looking here at. I mean, all of the cards of balance naturally speak to each other. So let's look at this one with the, you know what I mean? Like, I think the opportunity in this, so this card to me looks like, and normally I would not connect the magician with the temperance card, but there's something that's going on. And what I encourage, what I want to encourage you um, to do in working with this deck is to allow the cards to speak to one another. You know, and this is not a, um, like I said with the justice card, this is not a an interpretation that I would normally, normally pick up on. Yeah. All right. All right. So. Temperance the devil one of the things that i see emerging here in the devil card is the joy and the freedom of being in the darkness the joy and the freedom of being in the darkness the joy and freedom the joy and freedom of yeah, the joy and freedom of being in the darkness, of playing in the darkness, of not being afraid to touch the darkness. You know, I think the whole idea that dark is bad has created a lot of unnecessary fear. And there's something that's just really joyful here. And I think part of when I'm when I'm working with this particular energy, looking at second chakra. Um, issues of relationship, sexuality, addictions, and so forth. I think part of the uh, part of the issues, part of the, the problem has to do with allowing ourselves to feel and experience pleasure. And this is deeply connected, of course, to the whole notion of moderation that we that we learn and, and we that we practice and try to integrate through the temperance card. But I, I quite like that we have this contrast here of dark and light. And I know that the devil card is often in darkness. Um, but it's just something really beautiful here. Uh, Gigi says, I love the joy of dancing, like no one's watching or skipping above. Yes. And you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of skinny dipping. Skinny dipping at night, right? You, you, you go out, you take off your clothes. You run down the dock as fast as you can, dive in the water or however, you know, this kind of experience where there's utter, utter freedom and joy in that. It's just really beautiful. And I have to say, this tower card has really impressed me as well, too. It's just... Um, You've, you've heard me speak about the tower card and you know there's a there's a sensitivity that we have to the movement of the ground of what's going on in the earth and i never see the tower as a surprise you know it's it's something that we feel feel coming you may very well experience this card on the macro as well too politically community wise and so forth and it's never a surprise, right? It's it's always it's it has reached it, whatever it is has reached its breaking point. And it is time for it to come crumbling down. And we have a choice of how we're going to respond to it, but I think it's the depiction here is really beautiful. Mm. Ooh, I love that, Didi. Okay, so you're seeing energy emitting from the feet. Wow, 
That's beautiful. Sunny. You know, it is, and there's a, there's a, there's a pain that comes from invoking too much restriction. And I think there's something very clever going on in this deck in that we don't see the restriction in the chains in the previous arcana. And because we have allowed joy, we can then therefore allow transformation. Mm. Love that, Didi. Love that. That's great. All right, Marilyn. Bright blessings to you. And thank you for the work that you do. Star. And for those of you that work with uh, the the energy of the temperance card and understand the connection of the rainbow in the temperance card. This is um, kind of a powerful connection. I've always seen some sort of beautiful connection with uh, the rain, sorry, with the star and the temperance card. And just the fact that there's a rainbow in the background of this one is really beautiful. So, yeah. Okay. Let's go on and let's look at the moon and the sun together. And again, we see this sense of freedom, both in the day and the night, the joy of the darkness and the joy of the, um, of the light. Absolutely gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous cards. And then judgment and the world. When I saw the judgment card in the slow tarot, where they are also looking into a mirror and they see a crack, a tarot destroyer, get off my channel. You are not welcome here and we're going to continue to delete your comments. So just leave and don't come back ever again. When I saw the mirror and the reflection in the slow tarot, um, and in, I think there's there's a, a card very similar to this in the Anna K tarot. It's a very powerful message, but I also want to think about the whole idea of the mirror, the mirror as a portal, a mirror as a portal to something greater, to something to the other other side, and also speaking to the power of mirror work as well too and imagine looking at this judgment card and then the world card and stepping from through the mirror you know into this into the space of the sense of, of completeness, completeness and full uh coming full circle yeah it's it's just really beautiful I, I, I would highly, for those of you that read intuitively, you're looking for a more gentle deck. This one is, is really, it's really amazing. I'm going to do, I'm going to, we're going to go through the, the minors uh, side by side. And uh, it's kind of a slippery deck on a slippery table. So. Bear with me as I do this. Another plus for this deck is that Alexa, while there is no um, language around it, I love that in the little book that she, um, it's right up there with Mara Loon. Now, I don't have Mara Loon. I, I will go back and look at that one, but yeah. Uh, this deck I got before my low buy year. What I was about to say, was in this little pamphlet, she introduces the suits in the order of the Tetragrammaton. And I like that um, because I love to work with that energy and the sacredness 
of those elements working together in that particular way. Um, the the energy of spirit. There's just there's just something about that and the awareness of the creator to to present them in that way. Okay, so the aces. Uh, I'll have people in them. I have to say that this one is my favorite. There's just something really um, beautiful and profound here. The, the idea of this particular suit being the fourth suit, suit of integration, there's just a centeredness to it that is really beautiful. I quite like the idea of heels uh, for, the, for the third, for the instead of swords. Um, there's also, I want to say with needles, needlework. You know the focus that is required with needlework, whether you are a surgeon or whether you are a crafter. This is this is fine work. It's very detailed. There's concentration. Um, there's breath that is required as well too, or a breath would enhance the work. So there's there's something kind of special about the fact that we're, we're working with needles and the suit of swords instead of swords. Okay. We can, to some degree, see familiar rider weight kind of energy uh, in the cards and other ones, not so much. And that's okay with me. Um, sometimes it is. Uh, oh, this person is tenacious. For those of you that are watching the playback, just know that there has been a, a, tr a relentless troll um, in the conversation. And um, those that are here live with me are doing their best to um, delete comments. So yes, so it's it's funny because some cards feel very Ryder Pamela, like the art of Pamela Coleman Smith. Um, and others seem to carry, you know, take up their, their own energy. So you work with the deck in the best way that you can. You, um, you allow the cards that feel more intuitive to be more intuitive. And I think reciprocity is a great keyword for the twos. And I really feel that in the energy of the two of seeds. And then the two of cups. I'm just going to pick this one up to see. It's interesting with the blend of all of the symbols we see here. We have we have the eyes, we have the plants, we have the kissing faces. I, I'm I'm not sure about that particular card. Okay, let's go on to the three uh, symbol of growth. Uh, we see that something has is greater from coming together. So in the twos, we do have a sense of um, in the twos, we have a sense of separation, duality, comparison, and contrast. But in the threes, something there's something greater that is created by our union, by our coming together. So I think creativity in the threes speaks to your own personal growth, but also the power, the deep power of connection. And I think I really emotionally feel this here. <clears throat> All right. Four. Sacred space. Sacred space. Okay, let's go to Didi's comment here. Uh, your comments not come through yet. Okay, there we go. Uh, where are you? DD. Let's go to this one. Okay. With the two eyes and the two of cups, I think of two visions combining, flowing together. Okay. It also look, so I, let me go back to the twos because I just had a thought that I haven't had. Um, and while I've been working with this deck, I, there's a, quite a few cards I haven't 
had a rise in readings for myself or others. So one thing I was thinking with these two twos is that in this particular card, I often focus on the inner vision. The reason the eyes are closed is because the power of the inner vision is so important here. Um, but there's something here about the eyes, seeing the eyes in this card. So these two cards coming up together in a reading might paint a really um, powerful story. What I was going to say was I think stability is an important, so in this, uh, the theme of this deck, stability is really important. We, if we're working through grief, if we're working through our own trauma, um, our own darkness, that a sense of pattern, uh, practices, the stability provides comfort and safe space. And I really feel that, I feel that in, in all, in all of these. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. It's gorgeous. I love these fours. I really do. They're, they're really beautiful. Fives. Um, interesting how the plants in the Four of Cups are colorless and is the only four without a structure. Just a second, I don't understand your comment. Uh, the plants in the Four of Cups are colorless and is the only four without a structure. Okay. Hmm. That is an interesting observation. Okay, so let's look at this again. There's the Four of Seeds the Four of Candles, the Four of Cups, and the Four of Needles. All right, so we see the structure, on the, we see the table, we see the canopy of needles, and we see the chair. Why would a structure, bye Sharon, um, why would a structure not be present in the four of water. And perhaps this has to do with this, a structure, we need a structure to, to hold the water, but also water cannot be contained. If water is contained, if water becomes stagnant, I'm not sure about that. I will have to reflect on that. So thank you for that observation. Hi, Ange. Have you been lurking? All right, so the five, the cards of chaos, the cards uh, in the middle of the journey, the cards of, uh, I often call them the bridge cards. The place where we need to decide if we have the strength to go on, the strength to go forward. And I think there is an enduring quality to these cards. It's funny, you know, that this deck is, um, for a deck that is seemingly simple, conveys so much emotion. And I think Alexa did a great job with this. Um, the way that she uses tears, um, the subtle grays, the flow of the water energy. And when I look at the five of candles, we have a, a recurring theme, you know, in this deck, and that is one of, of, of freedom and release. And it almost appears as if the, all the players in this five of wands are, you know, they're not there for a common purpose. Uh, 
Uh, sorry, Ange, I didn't I didn't see you pop in earlier. Um, you know, so they're 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 not working for a common purpose, and I know that can definitely be an issue with the fives with the fives in general. So yeah, and there is a, definitely a lack of focus that is that is needed in the fives. I think this is done done very well. Okay, so the place of harmony, and beauty. Again, you return to a sense of calm in the sixes. This one, this one makes me laugh. I'm seeing a card here. I believe it's the Eight of Wands in the Vanessa Tarot. Uh, I call it my bewitched card. So that card made me smile right away. Um, peace, contentment. That's just such an uh, important part of, of understanding the sixes. And the receptive and active qualities of self or working with others, the whole notion of giving and receiving is, is an important quality in um, regardless of the suit, not just in the suit of pentacles. And again, um, I find this a really easy, a really easy check to work with. Now the magic, the magic and the mystery of the sevens gets somewhat uh, lost with the golden dawn conceptions of seven. Um, Weight painted them very challengingly. Uh, Crowley hated the sevens. And I really like the Celtic decks, the earthy decks that take the sevens, the magic, the mystery of the sevens, and understand that the journey of ace through six is embodied here. And there is learning, there is wisdom, there is uh, there are decisions to be made in the sevens. And I think we have a little bit more space in these cards to decide how we're going to read them. It almost looks as if the placement, this one has a has a toothache or that expression is, oh my, you know, I have invested so much energy in this garden. Was it really worthwhile? And it's funny, you know, when I, the first time I saw this card, I was thinking about all the money that gets invested in the seeds, the time and effort in preparing the soil, you know, the building of the, whatever it is you're building, if you're building raised beds or anything like that, I totally get it feeling of this card and I love that it's gone beyond the the idea of patience but there is there's a there's a reflective quality that is very important here we have the two hands again in that first card so I'm, I'm I'm all about hands, and if you've been following me on the Herb Crafters Tarot series, there's just there's just something about hands, hands and heart, hands and heartfelt action. Um, and so I'm I'm loving that we have several hand cards here, and then we go into the cards of um if you think of the lemniscate energy so whether you so let's go to the whole idea of strength uh flow leveling up moving on yes Dee. Dee. yes 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 the hands in the margaret peterson tarot too you know that was a really um that is a really potent energy for those of you that don't know um and what Dee is talking about. So in the suit of Earth, in the Margaret Peterson Tarot, there are hands and feet, lots of hands and feet. If I can find one for you, that would be amazing. Um, it's just really, really beautifully done. And there you can see the Ouroboros energy in the Two of Pentacles. And it's just such a, a great, great, a uh, symbol to work with and it can be because hands are we all have hands i think it makes for ease of conversation if you're reading for someone else and it it gives 
I don't know, there's just something about, okay, and now Amber's snoring beneath my feet. I don't know if you can hear her. This has been quite the live stream today. Okay. So eights, there is a, there's a flow that is required here. Uh, Didi says, thinking of the bird flying free in, thinking of the bird flying free in eight strength and the caged person in this eight of needles. Okay, let's get that card out. Yes, 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 yes. That is um, so obvious, right? And if we take the medicine of this particular uh, deck and we think about its power in journeying into darkness, grief work, a sense of loss, I think you could probably find language for that throughout the deck. All right, nine. So this particular card, um, I know we just used the word strength, but the one of the keywords for the nine of candles, the nine of fire is of course strength. Here we are at our third mini completion, seven, eight, nine. So we're coming to the uh, fulfillment, close to the fulfillment of the journey. These cards generally, um, also our solo. Um, and there's this, this space, there's a space that is required before we actually wind up and complete the journey. And I like that the creator has been you know, true to this particular energy. In the I was just looking at the nine of the nine of swords. One of the things that has really struck me with the nines is how important this re the reflective quality of the nines is. In order to bring the the suit to its completion, there's this. There's this pause, right, that is, that is necessary before we enjoy the end and then kind of step through the portal to the next to the next journey. And I'm actually starting to really like the Nine of Swords, seeing this as a breakthrough card of sorts. And I like that the figure is sleeping in this particular iteration of the illustration. Um, implying more that this is a penetrating dream. Perhaps there is potential. Perhaps there is an opportunity to awaken with uh, new insight. And let's not forget that insight is a great, great keyword for suit of um, needles and swords in here. All right, let's make sure we've got 10, 10, 10. All right. Something really beautiful about the candles rising overhead in the ten of I in the ten of fire. I'm seeing this as kind of the next step, the releasing of the responsibility, the letting go, the delegating. It's kind of a of a beautiful interpretation here. Very peaceful kind of cups. There is uh, an interesting relationship here in the Ten of Swords in that was it all in the mind all along? I would love to see the swords in the solar plexus, however, though, because I really kind of feel this ego release is based in fiery solar plexus energy. Um, and so this is a card I, I still haven't quite wrapped my head around. Okay. Now, in the court cards, there are no changes. Those of you that are in the live chat obviously are working with this deck already and have used it for some time. But we go from student to explorer to listener to maker. And this works really, really well with the deck. Um, 
And in particular with grief work, there's often a new part of the, uh, the next step after death. One is, um, it takes one back to perhaps an unwanted place of innocence, an unexpected place where we must start fresh. I kind of love that this is called student. You know, it's, an, it's a real invitation to begin from a place of inform, informed, an informed place. Yeah, and then we have the explorers, the, the active. The active energy, the pilgrims, the ones that um, stand up for, that invoke action. really like the I like the um, explorer of seeds and this is clever very very clever uh, so listening of course is a receptive skill it's a receptive quality the queens have this in spades and um, just absolutely love that Alexa called the queens the listeners I believe Alexa is queer so this is meant to be also be an inclusive uh, an inclusive deck. So that is beautiful. Uh, Didi says, there is a new deck that had Explorer as the page and the student as the knight. I was wondering if you had any thoughts on that. Interesting. The knight, the knight as the student. The only thing that I can say there is student would reflect the quality of air and wisdom. And if you associate the knights with air, that would make sense. The explorers you could look at as getting their hands in the dirt, touching the earth, being more active and practical. And so the pages as explorers would be more in touch with the earth, whereas the knights would be more cerebral. So that's the only, um, that's what I, how I might connect that. And then the, uh, the final one is the maker. Kind of makes me think of Tara of the She. Tara of the She, the suit of earth is, are the makers. Um, these are the ones who bring everything together. They have mastered the element. There is also a sense of control with the element. So the connecting them, of course, to the, to the fours. And in that way, the there is a, yeah, there is a, there's a bit of restriction with the kings, but there's also a master quality. And part of that is uh, has to do with responsibility and tradition as well, too. But I think she's done a really, really good job with this deck. Yeah. So thanks for walking through this with me. And uh, I don't have time for a quick reading here. I'm going to be hopping onto Facebook right now. Um, so I will, I'm going to keep this deck on my acrylic stand and be reading with it regularly on Tuesdays. So if you need any support in reading with it, please be sure to um, pop it on Tuesdays when I readings. Or book a reading and I can do a personal reading for me with the deck because it's it really is amazing. So thanks for being here today. Thank you all for your patience with the trolls. I really appreciate it. Take good care of yourselves. Namaste.